Hey everyone, it's Steven from 355A, and today I want to talk about bending polycarb. So our team uses two main ways to bend polycarb. The first one is a heat gun. A heat gun has a heating element and a fan and blows heat towards a piece of plastic in a pretty general way. It's great for making swooping curves like this for intakes, intake ramps for game elements, but a less common method of bending polycarb that our team has started using this season is called a polycarb bender. If you look up something like that on Amazon, you can find it, they're about $150. But it's really, really nice for making sharp 90 degree or really angular um, bends in your polycarb. It uses a heating element here, a coil, with a, which is water cooled by this 30 gallon tank and there's a pump inside that tank that pumps water through it. First thing I'm gonna show you is how to bend polycarb with a heat gun. The best way to do it, I've found, is just to go slow. You wanna be able to keep a little bit of tension on it after you heat it up, and you wanna hold it in that position until it cools. So start by just putting some heat onto the piece. So it's gonna take a little bit for the heat gun to really uh, get the plastic warm enough to bend, but as you uh, are applying the heat from the heat gun, you wanna pay attention, because if you do too much in one spot, right, you just hold it there right up close to it, you can get a um, you can melt the plastic and then it's not going to be smooth and it's not going to make a nice ramp or whatever you're trying to make with it. So now that it's softened up, I want to hold it at this position and I want to let it cool. And as it cools, it's likely going to come back from the position I'm holding it in a little bit and return to more of a shape like this. So with the heat gun, we found that you usually have to go over it a few times to really get that position to hold. But after just a little bit of time, you can see that it, now this piece is a 45 degree bend with a nice smooth curve to it. So now that I showed you the heat gun, the next thing I want to show you guys is the polycarb bender. So the polycarb bender, I already got it heated up, right? So it takes a couple seconds to get up to uh, the heat that you select on this little dial right here. And then after you can do that, you're just going to place your piece on top of it. You don't want to touch the metal. It gets pretty hot. Trust me, I know from experience. And then you'll start to see the, uh, the piece, when you flip it over, it gets kind of a shiny hue to it. And that's because the heat is directed right on that one point. So after just a little bit of time on here, just sitting here, you'll be able to take your piece off and get a really nice angular bend. Now we found that with the polycarb bender, when you hold the uh, piece of polycarb in the position you want it to, like actually be bent to, it'll stay there a lot better than the heat gun will. Because the heat gun, if you remember, I was holding it at like a 90 degree angle and it went back to like a 45. Here, I'm holding it at a 90. It's now it's at like an 85 degree angle, but it's really close to that point. So if you want to go for the 90, just put it there for a little bit longer, bring it down a little bit, and you'll get to there pretty quick. And now you've got a really nice angular 90 degree bend that's great for brackets or what I think it's really gonna be useful for is making drivetrain caps. With the polycarb limit this year, having two pieces for the top and bottom of a drivetrain cap or a funnel is really not a good decision as you're gonna waste two pieces when you could only use one. So when catting it, make sure that you have one side basically mirrored about the uh, center line, the center line right here of your, um, your funnel piece that's actually gonna contact the game elements and then once you put it on the polycarb bender, you're gonna put it from the corner here to the corner down here. There's a slight corner from this uh, angle right here. So you're gonna match those two up across the heating element, and you're gonna let that sit there and start to heat up, and then this is gonna give you a really nice 90 degree bend. Um, and I think that it's also really important to have a nice 90 degree bend on your drive frame caps, because if it's a really swoopy angle, you're gonna end up with like ramping over other robots and maybe even game elements. And that might be useful for the park zones, but I think the, uh, the risk of ramping over other robots doesn't outweigh that. So as you can see now, it's heated up. You're gonna start to hold it in this position. Is that 90 degree, a little bit past it if you want to go back to 90 degrees maybe. And then as it cools down, it's gonna keep its position pretty well. And then I'll hit it just a little bit more just get that final little bit there. Might have done a little bit too much there. 
And as that starts to cool off, you'll have a really, really nice 90 degree bend and a really clean drivetrain cap. But be careful though, because as you, if you touch this, you will burn yourself, it gets pretty hot. This thing is fantastic because of how hot it gets and how concentrated the heat is, but it's also a little bit more dangerous than a heat gun. So make sure you're being careful. And then a little tip that I found in designing these drivetrain caps is if you're running a two channel, a two whole C channel, right? For your, uh, your drivetrain, which I think most teams usually do, then your, uh, the perfect distance between here to here for that rectangle in between on your CAD is gonna be right about 1.075. 1.075 inches is just enough, so if you bend it from corner to corner on your design, it'll fit over that C-channel really smooth. And then this should almost be done. There we go. And we'll just bend that down. That needs a little more. And then just once this cools, you'll have your drivetrain caps made. As you can see, using the polycarb bender, we get a really nice funnel that fits right over the edge of our drivetrain really, really smoothly and snugly. With a couple screws and sandoffs, you mount it down and it works great. Uh, we will have a link to that in the description of this video if you guys would like to purchase that acrylic bender. And if you guys have any other ways of bending polycarb, share it in the comments and let us know what you guys think is the best way to do it. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe on our video. Thank you guys for watching. Good luck this season.